Okay, welcome back. In this video, we're going to finish this off now by showing you a demonstration, a real quick, easy demonstration of some emissive effects. Uh, and then uh, after that, we can then proceed to the next section, which is going to be our Cyber Girl. So let's get started. And now, in emissive effects, they're similar in some ways to the opacity, where you got to go through texture set settings and you got to go through channel and add a emissive channel. Now, that means that your emissive uh, fill layers are now going to, all your fill layers are basically going to have now an emissive channel uh, attached to it. Now, with that said, you may have noticed some blue effects hazing around here. That's just basically the smart material of the uh, glass visor. It apparently has a glowing edge fill layer on there that utilizes an emissive channel. It is your call if you want to use that or not. Uh, honestly, I kind of like the look of it. It kind of makes a cool little uh, area of look that's pretty neat. But uh, I'm going to just keep going on from there. So let's go ahead now and uh, with all that taken into account, let's add a fill layer. And with that fill layer, make sure it's dragged to the top. I'm just going to call, double click on that and call it Emissives. And I'm just going to, for now, turn off everything except emissive and I'm just going to bring the emissive to a bright color and I'm just going to maybe turn it a little bit green like so now notice that everything has just had the ambient taken out of the equation and everything's a little emissive so we got to first of all uh, make sure it's only affecting that center rod we can do that in any number of ways but I'll just go ahead and do geometry masking so I'll click on just the UV that is the center rod there, and I'll just go ahead and hit invert. So it's just that. Switch back into emissive again, and you'll see now it's just that area that is being affected. But it's not really glowing very much, is it? Well, that involves a necessity to manipulate some of the uh, shader uh, post effects that go through uh, Substance Painter. And to do that, we first have to go to the very top right here in uh, where it's the display settings. And uh, the first thing we have to do is kind of go all the way down to where it says activate post effects. And we got to look where it says glare. And we just kind of uh, move this little horizontal bar over so we can do a check mark on glare. Now that's probably going to then. Uh, not change too terribly much, but it is a requirement. Uh, so once you uh, go on ahead and do that, one thing I'll also do is I'll go ahead and hit anti-aliasing. That's just going to make the lines a little bit more smoother and less jaggedy. I'm going to then go over to where it says shader settings. And once we crank that uh, missed, emissive intensity up, you can kind of see a little bit more of a glare, a bloom effect. Now, if I go over back to display settings and go all the way down <clears throat> to where it says glare, you will also notice that the shape has an option for bloom, and that might uh, help see things a little bit easier. And we can kind of just see how everything goes from there. Now, this is still a little bit predominant, while this I want dominant. So again, remember what we did in the last video. We talked about some things where you can go ahead and uh, control the emissive channels opacity through individual fill layers through the blend um, for the opacity channels that are right over here uh, that you see. So what we'll do is, is we first have, in this case I want to turn down the emissive on all of this but I want to keep the emissive on this clear. So. First thing I'll do is I'll go to Steel Paint, open the folder, find my glass visor that I dropped within there, and then open that folder. And then underneath that will be the glowing edges one. I'll click on that, and then I'm going to click up to base color, click Emissive, and now I have a little bit of an opacity slider. Let's turn that down just a little bit so we can kind of make sure that's predominantly seen. Now the next thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to just do one quick little thing. I'm just going to duplicate this off and uh, add a black mask on here. And 
this time I'm just going to turn on all of the all of the geometry masks because again I just want to affect uh, certain areas of the geometry through the black mask. So first I'm going to because what I do is I want to kind of color in these areas you see here with an emissive texture. So I clicked on the mass of the emissive copy one. I'm going to click on polygon fill. I'm going to choose uh, the polygon fill option. And then I'm, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to kind of go through. I can do it also on here if I wanted to. But I'll just do it here. It's just easier. And like so. And what's nice is because this is a separate layer from the rod, I can control the emissive intensity a little bit easier. But probably we'll make things go a little bit off. Oops. This way then. And I got a little bit of a issue with that. So the nice thing about this is, is now that we have that, we can also change the color of any of these things, like so. Computer is also glitching on uh, some of this and turning off if this happens to you. This is probably a substance painter glitch. <laughs> Because every time I make a change, you'll see suddenly it just switches off. That's a glitch. You know that's a glitch. Hopefully you don't have to do that, deal with that. <laughs> so, now that we have uh, that taken care of, let's just go ahead and uh, just, you know. Now at this point, I can easily say that uh, we're done with uh, establishing the goal for this video of showing... Uh, some of the emissive effects we've accomplished what we wanted to do this was the main purpose of this video was mainly just to show the emissive how to activate the emissive channel and how to create some glow effects uh, I'm going to be doing some extra credit work towards the second half of this this is not mandatory for you to do but what I'm going to do is add some smart masks on over the emissive channel to cover up certain sections of the emissive to kind of give it sort of like a radioactive look so that layers below which are darkened can actually radiate through just to kind of crackle so I think what I'm gonna do is take like a smart mask of sand and drag and drop that pretty much right on top of the top fill layer that has my radioactive glow and if you click on that mask, you can kind of notice underneath there's a mask editor. That's sort of our generator that has all the parameters. And, you know, you, you can just kind of go through and just kind of go through everything. You just kind of get yourself educated through it. Just click on random buttons like I'm doing right now and just seeing what it does so you can kind of learn how all this uh, pertains. Now, again, it's not mandatory to do any of this, but I'm just kind of doing that right now. Uh, so um, I'm probably going to start with ambient occlusion as one of my main uh, ways to kind of get that kind of radioactive rod so that it covers up patches of the emissive fill layer so that darker, uh, darker fill layers below it start uh, radiating through. And uh, I may even just go through my, dis eh, my dis uh, graphic set or sh shader settings to kind of add a little bit of a glow to it you know just to have some fun and I can do more things like maybe I want to take that blue haze around the glass and maybe make that a little green I can do that and have some fun there maybe make it a little bit more bl brighter in um, <clears throat> like for example the uh, window area you know there's a whole bunch of things that you can do so that's just sort of the 
way, uh, just giving you a little bit of a taste of how to do this. Now again, we're coming up towards the end of the beginner section of this being concluded. We have one more video that is about exporting out the textures. And once we show you how to do that, we're going to move into the main course, which is going to be our cyberpunk girl. So we're going to kind of add on to what we've done there. And uh, from there, we're going to just kind of build off of what we have. So again, not necessary to get that radioactive look. Uh, because that's a little bit more complicated for some people, you know, attaching a smart mask, or I'm sorry, yeah, a smart mask onto a fill layer and then using a mask geometry to occlude specifically that one area. Uh, but we'll get a little bit further deeper into that as we go through uh, the Cyberpunk Girl regarding generators. So with that said, we got one more video. It's about exporting out textures, then on to the cyberpunk girl. So stick around and stay tuned.